and welcome to Ivy English. I'm Angela, and I'm Wesley. Today is the sixteenth of January, and、uh, we're on page forty-five of the magazine. And today we're talking about eating as a spectator sport. I mean, most people don't like being watched while they eat because it's not really elegant. <laughs> Shall we say?、Mm-hmm. But it can be a spectator sport. What's a spectator sport? It's a sport for watching. 嗯、mm-hmm. 哼，所以 spectator 其实就是观众。spectator sport 就是呢，观赏性的运动，像球类比赛等等的。那我们这一课是两天的课文，今天这是第一部分。那中文的标题是“照过来，大胃王逆心抱你之”。这个其实用闽南语来念会比较顺一点。Yeah. Oh, hmm. <笑> so. Let's read our article because it's funny, and then we'll come back and talk about the grammar and the meaning of each sentence. When people talk about eating as a communal activity, they generally refer to the feeling of friendship and togetherness that comes from sitting down and sharing a meal with others. Yet there is another way in which eating can be seen as a group experience: eating contests. Competitive eating contests challenge a person's eating speed or overall food consumption. Such events draw huge crowds and have become more and more popular with the streaming capabilities of the internet. While no one knows for sure how long food competitions have been around, there is a 13th-century Norse myth that features an eating contest between the trickster god Loki and a giant servant. If the concept was prevalent enough to appear in ancient folklore, it had probably existed for a long time before that. In the realm of contemporary eating contests, the governing body of the sport traces its roots back to 1916, when Nathan's Famous in New York City held a hot dog eating contest. However, these early competitions were mostly publicity stunts or county fair sideshows. It wasn't until the 1990s that competitive eating took off, and rigorous regulations were also formed. A pair of brothers relaunched Nathan's Famous's contest as a major sporting event, and since then, the world has been introduced to fast eating champions like Joey Chestnut and Takeru Kobayashi. In more recent years, a viral video trend known as mukbang or eating shows arose in South Korea in 2010. Either pre-recorded or streamed, such videos show creators consuming large quantities of food in front of cameras. Viewers who often dine alone claim that watching these people eat makes them feel less lonely. Others find fulfillment in watching someone eat quantities that they themselves could never manage. Okay, so this is the first day of a two-day article, and so we're going to stop here, and we're going to go back to the beginning and talk about the grammar and the meaning. So, when people talk about eating as a communal activity, we talk about that eating is something done together with other people. It's how you bond with other people; you share food with them. Communal means creating community or about community, and so when people talk about this as a communal activity, they generally refer to or they're talking about the feeling of friendship and togetherness. And togetherness is the feeling of being with other people, and then that feeling comes from sitting down and sharing a meal with others. 好，那我们可以看到他说，当人们在谈论 talk about 谈论吃这个动作或吃这件事情，以什么样的角度来看它呢？以一个 as a communal activity， communal 就是一个集体的一个社群一起会做的事情。那通常是跟交流感情有关，跟一起做这个活动有关。所以当我们谈论到吃作为一种集体的社群的这个一起做的一个活动的时候 ，activity， 那他们 they 就是指 people， 人们通常。Refer to 就想到的是指的是 the feeling of 是什么感觉呢 ？Friendship 就是朋友，还有呢 ，togetherness 就是和别人在一起的那种感觉。好，那这种感觉，这种朋友的感觉，这种友谊呢，是来自于 sitting down 坐下来，然后 sharing a meal with others 和其他人一起分享一顿这个食物。所以一起吃嘛，那就是感觉起来。当我们讲到哎，大家一起吃。我们想到就是跟朋友有关，跟交情有关，跟交朋友有关，跟社交有关，那都是跟大家在一起做的事。
Yet there is another way in which eating can be seen as a group experience, and it's not exactly a group experience when some people watch and other people do a thing. I guess the experience、mm-hmm. is everybody watching the person. But anyways, it's eating contests.、Mm-hmm. So we a whole bunch of people watch somebody eat, and、mm-hmm. then you know see how much they can eat compared to others. Yeah, 刚刚我们讲的是那种群体活动，跟友情有关，跟这个交朋友有关。但是呢 ，there is another way. 另外有一个这个形式方式呢 ，in which which 就是指这个 way。在这个情况之下呢，在这种方式之下呢 ，eating 吃可以被看为一种 group experience 啊，就另外一种也是跟群体跟吃有关的，是什么呢？是 eating contests， 就是。大胃王比赛，那大胃王我们不一定是跟他一起吃，但是我们看他吃啊，感觉好像也是大家一起在做一件事情，或者是真的大胃王比赛的时候，对参赛者来讲，那也是一群人坐在一起吃，可是呢，跟 friendship 没有关系，跟 togetherness 也没有关系。Competitive eating contests. This is where you are in a competition to see who can eat more. These things challenge a person's eating speed, how fast you can eat. Or overall food consumption, how much you can eat. Hmm. How competitive? 就是带有竞争性的，或者是对抗性的。例如，我们常常讲说 competitive sports。有些运动你可能就是健身而已，但是呢 ，competitive sports 就是要竞争的，要跟别人抓对厮杀的。所以在这里，大胃王比赛它就是一种 competitive eating contests。那它怎么样呢？它会挑战一个人的 eating speed， 它的吃饭的吃东西的速度。还有呢 ，overall 就是整体的 food consumption， 就是食物的消耗。Such events or these events draw huge crowds and have become more and more popular. They're becoming more and more like more and more people are watching these with the streaming capabilities of the internet. So a capability is the ability to do something, and streaming is the ability to send. Video material over the internet continuously, so it's like a stream of information comes into your computer and allows you to play this video without making it actually be on your computer. 嗯，好，所以呢 ，such events 就是指上一句说的 competitive eating contests， 他们会 draw huge crowds. Draw 就是吸引的意思，他们会吸引大大大的人群。好，这个 draw huge crowds， 而且呢 ，have become more and more popular. 而且呢，越来越受欢迎，大家越来越多人会看。With 就随着随着什么而越来越多人会看呢？随着什么？随着 the streaming capabilities of the internet. 啊、uh, ，streaming 就是串流啊，就是那个资讯会透过网络不断的传来。那个 streaming capabilities 是能力，所以网络的串流能力越来越强，就频宽越来越大。然后呢，这个网络上面传出的速度越来越快。那所以很多。节目你都可以及时看啊，所以有这样的一个特性之后呢，那这种大胃王比赛的活动就越来越受欢迎，越来越多人看。So while no one knows for sure how long food competitions have been around, so we don't really know in history when's the first time somebody has had a food competition. There is a 13th century Norse myth. So third. <laughs> Thirteenth century is the 1200s. So somewhere in the 1200s in Europe, there is a myth, a story that came from the upper area of Europe, from the area called the area where the people were called Norse. And this story is about an eating contest between the trickster god Loki. So Loki is a little bit like coyote, and I don't know who in the Chinese pantheon he would be similar to.、Mm. Maybe a little bit like the Monkey King. Maybe something along that. He likes to play around, and so he had a contest with a giant's servant. Hmm. 好，所以呢，前面讲到 while 是虽然，虽然呢，没有人知道 ，no one knows for sure， 没有人知道 how long 有多长的时间 food competitions have been around to be around 就存在的意思，所以没有人确定食物就是吃东西比赛存在多久了，但是呢。There is. We can find a 13th-century Norse myth, which is the Norse myth. 13th-century Norse myth that features features that 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 features that
，在两个人之间的比赛，这个甲方是 the trickster god Loki。trickster 就是恶作剧，所以的 trickster god 就是恶作剧之神，叫 Loki。那乙方呢是 a giant's servant， 是一个巨人的仆人。两个人比赛吃东西。And the servant was also a giant. So in the story, you kind of go, well, of course, the giant is going to eat more than the giant looks at Loki, and he was like, "You're tiny. You can't possibly eat more than me." But Loki can do magic and stuff, so he probably just magicked the food out of his stomach and kept、uh, eating. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, so you see, this giant servant servant should be also very big. Like this, you see, it looks like Loki is not going to win. It looks like Loki is not going to win. If it becomes a myth, it means that he is going to lose. 他后来赢了，通常是这样。不然，如果说你一个小小的、小个子的神跟一个很巨大的一个巨人比赛吃东西，巨人赢了，那根本没什么好说的。Yeah, it wouldn't be a story. There's no story in it. Exactly. <笑>所以一定是他最后 Loki 用了种某种方法赢了。Yeah, and、um, so, anyways, if this concept of an eating contest was prevalent enough, was common enough to appear in ancient folklore, to appear in a story that lasted all this time. It had probably existed for a long time before that, so it was probably a thing for all of human history. I think as long as there was food and there was people who were like, "I can do more than you,"、mm-hmm. there's going to be an eating contest. Yeah. So if this concept was prevalent, it means it's becoming widespread. So at that time, many people were doing this kind of concept, which is you can eat food. It's enough to be prevalent. 出现在一个古老的民间传说，所以我们看到它是十三世纪的民间传说。可是这种事情绝对是早于那个成为民间传说之前，因为很多事情一定是普遍了之后才会进入民间传说。所以他这个地方讲的就是这个意思。如果这种概念在当时已经普遍到可以进入一个古老的民间传说了，那么这样的一种概念 had probably existed for a long time， 它可能已经存在了很长一段时间。Before it was prevalent enough to appear in ancient folklore, so this place is using past tense because it is before that. That is a past point. It is in the past point of time, so it is using past tense. So, in the realm of contemporary eating contests, so in the realm of something is like when talking about these, or now we're switching to this time period. So, contemporary means now. So, talking about eating contests that happen now. Nowadays, the governing body of the sport. So it's an actual sport. We just learned from one sentence is not only there is a sport, but there's an administration to this sport that makes judgments about it. And the governing body is the administrative people that take care of or administer the sport. And this body traces its roots back to 1916 when Nathan's Famous in New York City. And they were Nathan's famous hot dog company, you know. So they held a hot dog eating contest. 好，我们看到他说 ，in the realm of 就是在某一个领域里面。但我们如果讲到说 contemporary eating contest， 就是其实 in the realm of contemporary eating contest， 就是当我们谈到当代的、现在的这种大胃王比赛的话，就 realm 这个领域，就我们现在转到这个区域来了。我们现在谈到这个 topic， 所以谈到。当代的 contemporary 就 current 或者 modern， 所以谈到当代的这些大胃王比赛呢，那 the governing body 就是一个管理单位，一个管理机构 of the sport， 就这样的一种运动有一个管理单位，这样的管理单位呢，这个存在是怎么样？是 traces its roots back to 1916， 所以现在这种类似的管理机构、管理单位呢，可以。追溯大胃王比赛到一九一六年，当时有一家公司 Nathan's Famous 在纽约，他 held 举办了一个 hot dog eating contest， 一个热狗的大胃王比赛。However, these early competitions were mostly publicity stunts. What's a publicity stunt? Publicity means like marketing, basically, and a stunt means like、um, an interesting action or something slightly dangerous or something a little bit crazy. So a publicity stunt is something that you do so that everybody notices you. So another thing that these competitions mostly happened at were county fair sideshows. So if you have a county fair, there's like the main events that the county is showing off all the different produce and stuff they have, and the sideshow would be like a side event. That was also kind of interesting, and these were also kind of like publicity stunts. They're basically stunts, the people doing weird stuff so that people would come and pay money and be like, "Ooh, ah." 嗯<笑>，好，所以呢，接下来他讲到说，但是这些早期的这些大胃王比赛呢，大多数 mostly 是 publicity 
stunts， 就是宣传的。噱头 ，publicity 就是跟宣传有关的，那这个就是宣传了。那 stunts 就是噱头，通常是让人很很亮眼的、很吸睛的，说不定有点危险的一些噱头。所以他们大大部分都是些宣传的噱头，或者是 county fair， 就是乡村的市集啊，里面的一些 side shows。side shows 就是穿插的节目，它不是主秀，但是呢，它有时候会穿插或在旁边的演一些东西，就增加它的乐趣啊等等的。It wasn't until the 1990s that competitive eating, as such, as a thing in in itself, took off or became a thing, became popular, became something that you could do. And also, it wasn't until the 1990s that rigorous regulations were also formed. Rigorous means they're very specific and careful. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was an example where there was an eating contest, and somebody separated all the hot dogs from the buns, and then poured the water on the hot dog buns, and then could just slurp them down easily because dry, they're much harder to eat. And、oh. so then they won the speed contest, and then everyone's like, "Hey, wait a minute! Now we need rules." <laughs> oh, okay. 好，所以 it wasn't until 什么时候 that 就是一直要到这个时候 that 所说的事情才发生。所以一直要到一九九零年代的时候呢。这些大胃王比赛才会真正的 took off， 在这里是 become well known or popular 的意思，是 became。所以换句话说，一直到九一九九零年代呢，他们才真的开始受到大家大众的欢迎，而且也是在一九九零年代呢，才有 rigorous regulations， 严谨的 regulations 规则 were also formed， 也被形成了。那刚刚 Angel 讲说，可能是当时有一个人热狗比赛呢。他把热狗全部分开来之后，把那个面包泡水，然后呢就变软，他就可以吃的很快，吃的很多。后来这个他可能就优胜了，大家觉得哎这样不对，所以就会有一些规定出来。A pair of brothers relaunched Nathan's famouses contest. Well, there's an interesting way of using apostrophes. So Nathan's famous. Famous is an adjective, so normally you couldn't call something Nathan's famous because the assumption is hot dogs. But they decided that they didn't want to have hot dogs as part of their name. But now we're talking about that. So this is their name, Nathan's famous, and it's their contest. So we have to say Nathan's famouses contest. <laughs>、mm. So this contest was relaunched as a major sporting event, as if eating food was sports. But whatever. And since then, from then on. The world has been introduced to fast eating champions like Joey Chestnut and Takeru Kobayashi, and they're so famous that I have even heard of them, even though I'm completely uninterested in this sport. Hmm. 好，所以有一对兄弟 ，a pair of brothers， 他们 relaunched 就重新开办，重新推出 Nathan's Famous Contest， 推出了这个比赛。As 就以什么之姿，以什么样的状况出现，以什么样的状态出现呢？以一个 major 是一个主要的重大的 sporting event， 是一个好像是个运动比赛那种运动竞赛那种感觉出现。然后呢 ，since then 从那个之后呢，这个世界 has been introduced to 就是被介绍认识了什么什么，也就是这个世界迎来了 fast eating champions 啊，就我们认识的，被介绍认识到了这些 fast eating 快食的 champions 冠军，例如 Joey Chestnut。还有另外一个台湾很很有名的小林尊。So in more recent years, a viral video trend. If something is viral, it means it spreads like a virus, super fast and getting to many people. So this viral video trend, known as mukbang or eating shows, arose in South Korea. So started happening or started being visible in South Korea in 2010. 好，那 in more recent years， 在更近期的几年呢，一个 viral 就是在网络上爆红的 viral 的一个 video trend， 一个影片的一个趋势，这所以是一种趋势。那我们称之为吃播，它这里给了应该是韩文，然后后面说 or eating shows 就是吃播。那他们怎么样 ？arose 就是出现、产生 ，appear 或者是 spring up 冒出来了，在哪里冒出来了？在南韩，这是2010年的事。Either pre-recorded or streamed. So if it's if it's pre-recorded, it's like recorded and then uploaded to the internet. And streamed is usually live streamed, meaning the show is going out as the thing is actually happening in real time. So these videos show creators consuming, eating large quantities of food in front of cameras. 好，所以呢 ，either 要么就是 pre-recorded， 事先录好的；要不然就是 streamed， 就是 live streamed， 就是现场直播。就要么就事先预录，要么就现场直播。然后呢，这些这样子的一些影片 show， 它
他会放给大家看，让大家看到 creators 一些创作者 consuming， 他们会吃 large quantities of food， 就大量的食物 in front of cameras， 在这个摄影机前吃大量的食物啊，就我吃给你看。So viewers who often dine alone, and there's a lot more people in the world who eat alone these days in front of their cam, their in front of their phone or in front of their computer, and they claim that watching these people eat makes them feel less lonely because we're hardwired to eat with other people, and so eating alone seems weird. Hmm. 好，所以呢 ，viewers who often dine alone， 哈，就常常一个人吃饭的这些观众呢 ，claim that 就是他们宣称用 claim 就表示作者不觉得这一定是真的，就他们这么说了，是不是真的？你们自己去判断，叫 claim。所以一个人常常一个人吃东西的这些观众，他们说，他们号称宣称 ，watching these people eat， 看这些人吃东西 ，makes them feel less lonely， 让他们感觉没有那么的寂寞。Now others find fulfillment in watching someone eat quantities that they themselves could never manage. So they find fulfillment, they find enjoyment and satisfaction in watching somebody else eat the kind of quantity of food they would never. Hmm. 好，所以呢，其他人 find fulfillment, fulfillment 就满足感。其他人会感觉到有一种满足的感觉。在哪里找到这种满足感呢 ？In watching, 他们只要看着 someone 看着某个人 eat 吃下。Quantities, 一些量，量是怎么样？这些量是 that they they themselves could never manage. 他们自己永远不可能这个 manage 呃能够吃得下的那个量。所以他们自己吃不下，可是看别人吃，哦，他们觉得哎，这个蛮好玩的。而且看他们那些大胃王一个一个的吃下去啊，也是一种莫名的满足感。So that's all we have for today. But join us again tomorrow for the rest of the story. Until then, bye bye. bye.